G'day guys, Cyanide here. This is the tanker painted up with the sun riding now. I reckon it looks okay. It's got the flammable signs down the side and across the back. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get around here. Yeah, that side too. So, um, I wouldn't do all this and not show you how I did it, so let's uh, wind back the clock and do a bit of narration on this, and I'll do some poser photos with the trapped unit at the end of the video. Let's get at it. So I started off with um, cutting out some bits of cardboard to give myself an idea of size and location for the signs that I was going to put on the side of the uh, tanker. Once I've done the real world, I then took the measurements of the bits of cardboard and added that to the computer in Photoshop here I think. Uh, once I had my little squares or rectangles, whatever you want to call them, I then put in the word flammable inside of each one in a similar font, not exactly the same as the um, truck. I printed those out onto um, A4 or full size sheets of um, label sticky paper. Got an idea of pretty much where I wanted it. <clears throat> then I stuck the um, sticky paper onto uh, bits of cardboard that uh, my mate Ross gave me from his work. Uh, then, then I started the fun job of using the printed out lettering and cutting out the stencils of the words for each of the signs. I cut two sides, two signs for the side and what two for the back so and I reused the ones on the side on both sides but I didn't feel much of this because this is uh, tedious it's what they call shit work on Cold War motors not hard just really tedious uh, once I cut out the lettering I then went about cutting out the actual uh, squares around the um, the lettering so they become a two-step stencil if you will and um, that allowed me to lay down two different colors using the same stencils and I knew that my lettering would be pretty much square within within the uh, rectangle there. and that's pretty much it really slow tedious makes me want to buy a vinyl cutter every time I do this but I still haven't brought a vinyl cutter because I don't do this that often. But yeah, it's no fun. No fun at all. I then cut it in half and we're good to go. Right on, so hopefully you guys are caught up onto where I got to with this now. With the little previous voiceover bit. So I'm pretty much ready to start spray painting. I did use some little bits of lacing wire and put the, the centers of the large sign that goes across the back but I'm not going to bother with these little ones I'll just paint them in afterwards because they're so small. It's By the time you got you know a spray painting you got bleed in that something that tiny it's not going to make any damn difference I don't think. So um, yeah ready to go so I can pop out the lettering and use these to do the, the white background then pop that in and uh, red and that'll put in the lettering that's how I'm thinking I'm going to do it this line here that I did when I um, drew it in the computer that's my guideline where there's a split in the side of the uh, skirts so that'll so I know where the its height is so I just got to do the back and forth so um, yeah I think we'll get to the spray cans and do the fun part because cutting out these stencils not fun no sir righto let's get on with the painting eh looking forward to it it's a hot day it's a good day to do it
dry for a little bit and uh, I'm going to pull these off now. If you're wondering what these things here are, they're um, the magnet type things that go between the arm and uh, hard drives uh, controls the, the little reading thingy bob what's this. Really good magnets, nice and strong. So, all right. Not too shit. Once they rust up in there, that'll be okay. Let me get the camera down. Yeah, it's not actually too bad. There's not much bleed there at all. And like I say, I'll just paint in the middle of the A's and the B's on these little signs. So, um, yeah, hold on. I zoomed in a bit there. That will do. Hopefully I haven't got a typo in it, eh? <laughs> Now's the time to find out. Should have used a spell checker. Right, I'm going to do the other side. I won't film that. It's the same. Um, I'll get the camera back on when I'm doing the back of the tanker. So I've done the other side. Uh, upon taking it off, I realised that this sign here is too far forward. It should have been about half an inch back, but... Eh, it won't matter. If anyone's going to complain about that, then bollocks. I'm up to this one now. Go on the back. It's a bit different. I've got it set up for the white. Um, <clears throat> this one's going to be a wee bit more tricky because it's red lettering at the back with a white border. So my thinking behind this was I'd spray paint this white. Then I'm going to put on the underside, I'll flip it over. Um, Paint, uh, painter's tape, fill it in again, and then slice out a border. So, if you can see in here, oh, the reflection's probably a bit. See how it's red with a, a thin white border? This one's been, um, I've been trying to figure out how to do it, and this is the only way I can figure it out is to do the white and then um, just tape in, retape it and then just go around and cut it for the blade again. So it's gonna take a while to do this one, but I'll film putting down the white, uh, unlike the other ones where I left the stencils on and just went straight to red. This one I have to take off so I can modify the larger lettering here to create the white border, so we'll get on with that now. off again. So I'm just going to flip her over. Mm -hmm. and tape over the, the lettering. So it's filled in again. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is get my blade and cut these letters out again, just on the tape. Oh, I don't know, three or four millimeters in. So when I put this back down, it will leave the white border and just spray paint thinner red lettering. So. Um, I'm not going to video cutting these out. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just uh, flick the camera back on when we're placing it back onto the tanker and putting on the last of the red. 
Yeah, it's going well, it's going well. All right, let's get at it. Okay, so I've um, put the tape, uh, cut the words out, so there's like a border in there now. So I'm going to relay this down, put the magnets down, hit it with red. <clears throat> the challenge will be lining it up exactly, that's, that's going to be the fun part. I was using that square at the bottom to do the lining up really. So yeah, magnets. That ain't too bad, you know. It's not perfect, but this is going to be rusted more, and there's going to be diesel oil dripping all down the back here. So, yeah, that looks actually pretty good. Let me uh, just get this outside, sit in the sun for a bit, take some beauty shots. I won't bother filming, um, doing the brushwork, filling in the A's and the B's here. I'll just get on to that. Right, yeah, it's looking all right. So, we just paint dry a bit, throw it back out, sit in the backyard under the sprinklers and be cruel to the paint job and make it rusty and faded. Cool. <laughs> 